welcome to November. It's a whole new month here for the kids' lessons at Timberlake Christian Church. We are going to take the opportunity to spend the month um, thinking about what we have to be thankful for, what God has given us, and how we can use the gifts that He's given us to bring glory to God. Now, I don't know about you, but one of my favorite things about fall are apples. And I love the way they taste, the way they smell. And um, I don't know if you like apples. Um, I like my apples with a little bit of cheese, but maybe you're someone who likes their apples in apple cider, or uh, you like them with a little bit of caramel, or you put them in an apple pie, or maybe you cook them down and make apple butter and put them on a hot biscuit. However you choose to use this gift that God has given you, it's a good thing. And the amazing thing about apples and many other good things that God gives us to eat is inside there are seeds. And if you plant those seeds, then you get a tree or a vine that grows more of what this is. And it's one of the ways that God provides for us is by um, reproducing what He has um, made. And so it's, it reminds us that every single thing that God has created has a purpose. Whether it's an apple or a teeny tiny insect, it's all part of God's plan and God has a purpose for its existence. And that reminds us that just like an apple, God has a plan for our existence. And He has a purpose. And He has designed that purpose way before we were born. And so today we're going to look at um, how we can examine our um, purpose and discover what it is that we should be doing. And by using the gifts that God has given us, we say, thank you, God, for making us and making us like this so that we can be part of your plan to spread your love to the whole world. Watch this video. Lauren, time for bed. But it's only 11 o'clock and we haven't even watched Summer Party Night. Yeah. You can watch Slumber Party Nightmare 2 after you've seen Slumber Party Nightmare 1. And when is that? When you're in college. Good night. It's okay, Lauren. I'm kind of tired. Okay. Good night. Do you guys think you for today? And thank you for having a good kiss. And thank you for my son, Lauren. And thank you for my music. And thank you for... Mary, what are you doing? Sorry, I was just praising God. For what? For everything. Every good gift comes from God. And I praise Him every night. For every night? Yes. God makes us all special. And He has a special plan for us. Do you think I'm special too? Of course, Lauren, you're one of the best artists I know. Then I should praise him too. What do I say? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for my... Thank you for making me me. Thank you for making me me. Thank you for my art. Thank you for my art. Thank you for me. Thank you for the plans you have for me. Does he really have plans for us? Yes. Then I really want to see those plans come true. Lauren, that makes two of us. Ever since you were a tiny child, your parents have taught you to say thank you. It's a common courtesy that we use. Maybe you started saying thank you as soon as you started saying mom or dad or ball or no. We say thank you because it's a way to express our gratitude to people around us. But sometimes we get so used to saying thank you that we forget to check if we really mean it. Is it really expressing something that we're grateful for? We say thank you to the person who brings us our food at a restaurant. We say thank you to our grandparents when they give us an amazing gift for our birthday. And it's a good thing that right after, oh, it's exactly what I wanted, the next words are words of thankfulness. Thank you. But just like those words need to mean something, 
So it needs to mean something if we use those gifts. If you say thank you, but then you put your present from your grandparents in your closet and you never play with it, you never wear it, it's not doing you any good and it's not doing good to anyone else. And so when we say thank you, we should mean thank you, but then we should use those gifts. Sometimes we forget to be thankful to God. And God is the one who made us and put us in this amazing world. And the one who knows what we can do and the amazing ways that we can share ourselves with other people. And yet, we forget to say, God, thank you for giving us this. Thank you for making me. Thank you for making me love books and, um, or art or acting or whatever. Instead of saying, God, thank you for the way you've made me, sometimes we wish we had a different skill or a talent or a gift. And that's not being very thankful to the way that God has created us. Um, we see over and over in Scripture that God created us and made us for a reason, for a purpose, so that we can do something amazing as part of His plan. And we especially see this in Jeremiah. Now we're going to get our Bibles and we're going to turn to Jeremiah. Jeremiah is in the Old Testament and it's in the major prophets. If you're looking in your table of contents, it's going to be about midway through the Old Testament list. And Jeremiah was a man who was a prophet, a messenger of God to the people. And yet when God showed him the purpose that he had for him, Jeremiah was like, oh, not me. We see that often in scripture, and I think we do that too. We say, oh God, I don't want to do that. But he has a plan and he has a purpose. So turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and read verses 4 through 10. The whole chapter is great and tells this story, but I think 4 to 10 is the very best verses that show the purpose that God has for Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me, that's Jeremiah talking and writing, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you or set you apart. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak. I'm only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Jeremiah came along at a time in history when God's chosen people, Israel, had forgotten that they had promised God that they would be his people and that they would worship only him. And he had told them at the very beginning, if you stop making me your God and you stop worshiping me, bad things will happen. And they had forgotten and God was warning them that, hey, we have a promise. I made a promise to you. You made a promise to me. And if you don't keep your promise, bad things will happen. And so Jeremiah's job was a hard one. He had to give those warnings to the people to say, hey, you've forgotten your promise to God and bad things are going to happen. And yet God gave him the strength and reminded him that he was always with Jeremiah when Jeremiah was giving those hard warnings and messages to the people. Jeremiah didn't believe that he could do it, but God believed that Jeremiah could do it. And God said, hey, before you were even born, I knew that this was the job that you would do and that you would do it because you love me and you obey me. And Jeremiah ended up being one of the prophets that we hear most about, we read most about in Scripture. And it was because he accepted the challenge 
the purpose that God had created for him. God made each of us uh, for a special purpose. And we probably won't all be prophets like Jeremiah. Maybe we will give warnings to people that they need to turn back and obey God. But maybe our special purpose is to love other people or to teach or to create or to write or to act or to sing. We don't know what the purpose is, but God has made it for us. Watch this video from YouTube that recaps our verses from Jeremiah. Hey kids, have you ever made a promise to someone? Like, you promised your friend that you would play with them at recess? Or maybe you promised your sibling that they could choose the next TV show. Well, in today's lesson, we're gonna learn about a time when the Israelites broke a promise to God. Jeremiah was a prophet that warned people not to break their promises. God had chosen this job for Jeremiah way before he was even born. And Jeremiah was a prophet during the time when people had broken a promise to God. They promised to only worship him, but then they started to worship the fake gods. So Jeremiah warned them that if they kept doing that, God would punish them. He would send a big army to take over their land. The people broke their promises and ended up paying for it. Well, the people kept worshiping the false gods. And everything Jeremiah warned about became true. An army from Babylon destroyed Israel and took the people captive. The Israelites knew what would happen, but just kept doing the wrong thing. Even though the Israelites messed up, God had hope for them. The Israelites had made a big mistake, but God didn't give up on them. Jeremiah also told the people that God still had a plan for them, and that plan was to give them a good future. He promised the people that one day they would be able to return to their land and no longer live in captivity. God keeps his promises even when people don't. Eventually, God's people were free from Babylon and got to return back home. Even though God's people had turned their back on him, he was still willing to keep his promise. Memory verse. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. When Israel turned away from God, bad things had happened, but God was always with them. He just wanted to realize how much they needed him. Even when they did things that made God sad, he still kept his promise to them. So kids, next time you make a promise to play with your friends at recess, think of this lesson. And remember, God will always keep his promises to us. Just like Jeremiah, when God said, hey, um, I have something for you to do, Jeremiah was like, oh, not me. I'm too young. I don't know how to talk. I can't do that. Sometimes we think, I, I don't think I have a gift. I'm not good at anything special, and, and surely that's not for me. That must be a job for somebody else. Sometimes we need to take a little bit of time to explore what we are good at and how God has created us. One of um, the books that has helped me is this book that says all the ways to be smart. Because sometimes we think people are just really good at singing or acting or something that's really visible. And yet, sometimes the way that God has created us is something that is more subtle. It is easy to miss. And we don't think of it as being a gift. I have a friend, Marilyn, whom I love very much who her gift that God has given her is the ability to love people. And people who don't like to be hugged love to get a hug from Marilyn. And God is currently using her gift at loving people, at talking to people, at showing God's love to people in another country where she is doing what God has created her to do and that is to love people and be interested in them and to care about them and be part of their lives. And God is using it um, to expand the people who know him and love him all across the world. I have another friend, Adam, and he, his mind is works in mechanical ways. And I did something at my house, a, a house repair, I followed all the instructions. I read all of the instructions. 
I did it and it didn't quite work. And so I read all the instructions again and I tried it again and it still didn't work quite right. And I was telling my friend Adam about it and he came over to my house and he could look at it and just watch it for a minute and he would say, I know what we can try. And he took the part apart and he bent a little bit here and he bent a little bit there and he was like, it's getting caught here and it needs to do this so we'll just make these changes. And now it works perfectly. My mind did not think that way, but his mind that God has given him could easily see the problem and fix the problem. Both of those are ways that we don't think of as an obvious talent like writing or singing or drawing or acting. And yet, both of them can be used to help other people and to let people know that God has made them in an amazing way. Sometimes we need to stop and say, how is it that God has made me? What am I good at? Even if it's something small. And then figure out a way to use the way that God has made you to share that with somebody else. And every time you weed a flower bed, you're helping someone learn about God. Every time you um, bake some bread, you're helping someone learn about God. Every time you are running a race and cross country, you're showing other people what it is to celebrate the gifts that God has given you. Every time you write a new song or you help someone else, However it is that God has made you, there is a purpose. There is a reason that he has made you that way. And you can use whatever gift it is that he has given you to help somebody else. And just like Jeremiah, you can step up and say, I will do this. And I will point other people to Jesus by the way I use the gifts that God has given me. And I will say thank you for making me like that. Let's see how well you listened and not just to our um, story, but to our verses, and see how well you do at these review questions. I think one of my favorite things about um, our verses from Jeremiah chapter 1 today was the reminder that often we offer an excuse when God has a job for us to do. Just like Jeremiah said, I, I can't talk like that because I'm way too young. And God was like, don't be giving me that excuse. Sometimes we think, well, when I grow up, I'll do this or I'll do that. Or when I get better at this gift, then I'll use it for God. And those are excuses. And I think God would say to us, just like he said to Jeremiah, uh, that is not going to work. I have a purpose for you. I have a plan for you. And you need to figure out that plan and you need to obey. Just like the apple that God um, gives us and the, the blessings that he gives us, right now 
at the age that we are. They're for pleasure, but they're also for a purpose. We find pleasure in me. I find pleasure in reading, but there's also a purpose in that reading and that learning of knowledge, and that's to share it with somebody else. Um, maybe there's some pleasure in running cross country, but maybe there's also a purpose in running cross country. Maybe it's your attitude. Maybe it's how the friendships that you develop with other people on your, your team or the other people that you come across at the, at the cross country meets. There's always pleasure and a purpose. And that's how God has designed us. So when we find the things that we are good at, and sometimes even adults have hard time finding out why did God make me this way? How did he make me? And how do I use that? So don't get frustrated and discouraged if you're having trouble figuring out what your purpose is. Just be confident in knowing that God has created all things and they all have a purpose. And that purpose is to say, God made me and I am so thankful. And because he made me, however he made me, short, tall, um, loving learning or really just wanting to use my hands to make something, all of those things can be used to say, thank you, God, for making me. And I'm going to share your love with somebody else. Our verse this month comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8, and it says, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. This week, enjoy an apple or something else that God has given us. Take a minute and stop to think, what am I good at and how can I use that to bring glory to God? Who can I um, share God with? just by acting and doing the things that God has gifted me with. Have a great week. Don't forget to say thanks, and I'll see you next time.